Well, hello there, Shooby Doodlers. It's Tuesday, 31st of March, and we're at five o'clock UK time today, which is a little unusual because my guest is not on Skype. <laughs> and she lives in Portland, Oregon, in the States, and she would have been talking to me at eight o'clock in the morning um, because the clocks have gone forward here. So she asked, could we maybe do it an hour later? So I'm trying to raise her on Skype. So she's either on a very important business call um, or, or she slept in or she's forgotten or there is some other problem going on. But I'm sure there's a very good reason. So um, I'll just keep going in the hope that she might uh, come online. I'm just having a look on there. Nothing happening. Nothing happening. So we have Kath TV. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and Abby B. Hello. Hello. Big Shed. I'll, I'll be on your telly again. Shoot. Thank you very much, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jessica Taylor, hello there. So what are we going to do in the meantime? Um, well, I had a, 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 I've had had a, a, a email from Sonia recently and uh, she's she has a problem with perspective. So what I could do is if I can't. If, yeah, now you should hear it. Now, if we come back, so this is the show that we were going to see. But what I could do is change and do tomorrow's today. How about that? And we've gone back an hour as well. So, <laughs> the power that I have here. Yay! <laughs> so, um, let's talk about perspective instead. And then maybe we might see if we can get hold of Fiona tomorrow or another time. I'm sure there's a very good reason she's not here. Um, so, uh, perspective. Let me find this thing. Um, I have printed out Sonia's problem. And I, I think a lot of people have... You have to get your head around uh, perspective. Uh, and so I'm just going to go over to the overhead camera. There we go. And um, Sonia has sent me this and said, <laughs> Help! <laughs> I'm just checking you. Yeah, yeah, you're getting the microphone again. <laughs> um, and I have a feeling that might be slightly. There we go. So, what is the problem here? Now I need to find my glasses. Good. There we are. Because um, I wasn't expecting to do this today, of course. So, what is the problem? Sonia has said that she's trying to do this line here um, and get the room and get the the furniture right so this looks like it's a wardrobe an old-fashioned kind of wardrobe with a suitcase on the top absolutely as you would find but what have we got going on here with perspective this is the line that Sonia wants to have so what we have to do is extend that right the way back and you've got a line here which is the floor so I'm going to follow that that's going to extend all the way back and she's got a line here which is going to extend all the way back in which case this is our point <laughs> of vanishing point is the word we're looking for i haven't talked about <laughs> this is all off the top of my head <laughs> so i haven't thought or talked about perspective for a while maybe i should get um a ruler in and make it a little bit straighter how about if i do it something like that so we're getting something like that and we're continuing with the the floor line down here and then we're going to continue with the line that she wants to have which is here and so it's all roughly meeting up here in which case if she wants her wall to be like this now I don't know whether see this is actually distorted inwards which could be her camera that has done that um, so if she's done this on the phone which I suspect she has uh, if she's been um, tilting the phone a little bit while she's done it, rather than have the phone absolutely square over, it might have brought the the top. It has a parallax, is it? A parallax <laughs> effect. So anyway, um, I'm going to assume that she wants to have. No, I'm not going to assume anything. OK, so that's actually vertical there and that's vertical. So that should be the vertical. So the, so the walls are closing in. So maybe that is a dramatic effect that Sonia wants. 
So, what is going on here? This piece of furniture is straight on at us, but it can't be because we are, to be able to have this view, it means that we are a fly on the ceiling. Uh, so, okay, we are a little fly sat on top of the ceiling looking at this and to be able to see that view we are going to want to um, everything goes to this vanishing point so we need to take a line from the top of the wardrobe whoosh, like that and to there and in fact we need to draw lines from the top of the suitcase as well whoosh, like that and whoosh, like that and so this is this is one point um, perspective and um, we're looking dead on to this so we're not seeing any of the sides so we don't need to worry about that but we're going to see um, a bit of the top of the wardrobe which is going to be like that and we're going to see the top of the suitcase like that um, which is kind of it's, it's kind of weird because we're looking down but we're also seeing the top of the thing. So it's a very, very odd view that we're trying to do here. Um, it's a very complicated view. And I would normally probably put the ceiling in about there, I think, and bring the ceiling in up about there. So if I kind of draw this in in ink, we're going to get the suitcase in the top. And there's the and, the, and we're going to be able to see the the insides of this wardrobe because it's all kind of hollow at the top, isn't it, in a wardrobe like that? Well, I'm assuming it is. So the suitcases kind of drop down into it. And we've got the little things and the handle like that. And then the the, the, the wardrobe will continue down like that and the walls will be like that like that now everything everything follows this rule of the lines um, so we want to do the same with the picture frame which will go at that angle and we'll then see that's not quite the right angle there either so that will then want to go like that if we're going with this line then in fact we want that to be <laughs> Mm, leaning in a bit and that would be leaning in a bit and because we're a fly on the ceiling we're looking down on it so we're seeing kind of the thickness of the painting there like that and it might well be kind of um, hanging slightly out so we'll have a bit of shadow behind it like that does that make sense? Does that make sense? Have you got any questions? Uh, I'm just going to doodle this, but if you've got any questions, you're kind of thinking, what? what? <laughs> What's he doing this for? Where is Fiona? I want to know all about agents. Um, you've got a sort of 10 second delay on this so that you can uh, be typing in your questions. And in a, in a little moment, I will turn around and look at the screen and see what anybody is saying. <laughs> I press that button and come back into focus there we go so uh we have sandy Burrell says hello and uh, joseph miller says greetings shoe from connecticut hi there how are you doing oh here's fiona how fantastic oh 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 um i tried to find it there we go fiona how are you doing i'm gonna put i, I just put a game over to bluetooth Say something. Hello. <laughs> Excellent. There we go. Now, I'm assuming that people can hear you because um, we, we, I started without you. Skype is muted, so we don't. Yeah. You just took a snapshot. How cool. <laughs> there we are. So, okay, guys, I'm just going to introduce you to Fiona. And I can go something like, that didn't work either, did it? No, if I go like that, I can go, I can introduce, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Fiona Kenchol. No, Hi. No, it's supposed to, it's, you're supposed to get a cheer and a clap and all sorts of things. Hey. <laughs> what can I say? There I, we go. I, 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 I can 
hear people cheering in the street. They're banging pans. Brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just started doing a little bit of stuff on uh, perspective. So uh, I'll just say, crisp and dry. How do you make the room look more normal? I will do that tomorrow. OK, so we have got Fiona here. How are you doing? I haven't seen you for such a long time. Oh, <laughs> Lovely to see you. You have not changed a bit. Uh, neither have you. <laughs> neither have you. <laughs> You're too fine. <laughs> so um, I want to talk about all the incredible things you do. And, and I first know I first knew you as an editor. Yes. A long, long yes. time ago. And yes. um, so maybe Good we could. Sorry. Like we did some great books together. I can see some of them on the shelf. Yeah, you can so. do. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I I first met you in fact when I I came to um, uh, NC Black, and mm. I was showing my portfolio yet again or something. And then someone it might have been Helen. I can't remember. Said, "I want you to meet someone." And then you sort of came down with this story from this unheard of author called Michael Morpurgo. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, we never knew who he was and, and it turned down by all the big publishers. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and we did this thing and you, you kind of had a real vision at the time because it was right at the beginning of sort of desktop publishing as we called it. And oh, no, no, before that yeah. I cut out every single piece of that, that book by hand with glue. There is no desktop. <laughs> I know, but 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 it, it was that time, and it was the computers that set things free. But NC Black just would wouldn't spend the money on the computers. Would they? No, 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 we didn't actually have a computer. <laughs> I managed to get my boss to get one, and she said, um, "Oh, well, we don't use the television that you asked for last year very often, so I'm a bit worried about getting the computer." <laughs> and 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 one of my tech savvy friends programmed it to say, "Good morning, Jill." Oh, this is Rupert. Hi, Rupert. Oh, I th um, that's really, I thought that was my cat. That's just... <laughs> okay. I thought, what? <laughs> yeah. Hello, well, Rupert. Well, have, you still got a, have you still got a marmalade cat? No, he got run over, oh. I'm afraid. He was so lovely, that one. But but we do have a black cat called Mr. Darcy because he's dark and handsome. <laughs> oh, he's, he, he's a rogue. He's, he's pretty evil, actually, this one. <laughs> And I've just moved house, so he's just adjusting to being an indoor cat, and right. he's not really liking it very much. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and anyway, is, he, so, is he being locked down as well because of coronavirus? We, we've all been locked down, oh, longer than you guys have. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is, huh, yeah, it's been eight days since I left this house. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Dear. So, yeah. so it's probably quite nice to sort of get out, get out and talk like this. <laughs> I'll talk. It's particularly nice to talk to you, Shu. I've got to say, it looks like the sun shining. It is. And I gather you've had pretty crummy weather, so that's nice. It's lovely now. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah. so e editing. See, editing. I, yeah, because you, as as an editor, you had a huge influence on 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 things that I did, and 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 taught me so much i think there were you know two two particular things on that first book that we did i remember um i i did sort of rough rough sketches and you said hmm come come up to london and have lunch <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and, and we went into the library and, and and had a sandwich and you kind of went through and said this just isn't good enough you know <laughs> and and you know that you said you said you've got to the one thing you said was she said you said you know those camera cranes that they have in hollywood and that you can go up and down and around and and it was like my head exploded when you said that mm -hmm. and i went back and went completely over the top and then i had to come and have lunch with you again where we calmed everything down because <laughs> i gone too far there was a lot of lunch there was a lot of lunch very yes <laughs> but 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 it, but that that kind of thing is, is, is kind of what editors do. A good editor really kind of is, is what do you think an editor does? I'm talking too much. <laughs> I, I, I love that you, you see, for me, 
the, the best thing about being an editor or any kind of, you know, filmmaker, all those things, is that you get to work with the most talented, most creative people. And my job is just to make you keep digging and bring out the best in you. That's that's all I do. It, I think the writers and the artists that I work with, you know, they've already got the talent. It's just sometimes you've just got to push them a bit to show off their talent that that's that's bottom line what it's about really i think because <laughs> the set the second time was was with the ginger ninja and, and and there were probably two things when i first came to you and i talked to you about it we went for a great long walk uh, down by the river thames and talk, talking it through and talking it through and and then um and it was going to be a boy originally not a cat and you that's kept saying it should That's be right. a cat and I'm like oh I don't know and then a you cat came out of the front door somewhere and came up to talk to us yeah. <laughs> I went yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah because I have magical powers you do yeah. <laughs> I do. I remember that very clearly. You were like, oh, does it have to be cats? I'm so <laughs> over doing cats. And it was, it, it would have been so much less fun if it had been a boy. I mean, there's room for a ninja boy, but yeah. at that particular point, it's, it, you were talking about big, important issues like bullying and standing up for yourself at a time when there wasn't much being written like that. Yeah. And, and, and being able to, I, I think animals is a really great way to, um, to talk about the big important things um, in, in a way that makes it accessible and meaningful to kids. So how to deal with bullies, how to deal with bereavement, how to deal with all the weird stuff going on at, at the moment. You know, if you do it through animals, it just somehow it just makes it more accessible, I think. Yeah. And yeah. Take, takes, takes the punch off it a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I I quite agree, and 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 I think I think that was the thing that you kind of made me see at the time, and and when and when I finally wrote my first draft and got it all complete, then you said I'm coming to see you, so so, yeah, so, right. so you right. came to me for the day, and and after yeah. lunch, and, and we got a message here from Chris C, who says editors are for having lunch with got it right. yes, yes. can um, i just say the the, the the glory days of lunch have gone when when my, my very when i first started in the 80s you used to you know you used to have at least two bottles of wine over lunch yeah yeah those yes. days are gone yes, yes no, it, it's all no drinking anymore no, I, I remember i used to come up i used to come up to ac black on the bus from cambridge and i remember once getting home and I couldn't remember how I got home because somebody had just kept topping my glass up at lunchtime. That, yeah, that would be one of our parties. They were, yeah. they, they were, yes, they but, were wonderful. But that was, yeah, it doesn't happen like that anymore, I'm afraid. No, no. But the other nice thing about being an editor in a smaller house like ANC Black was literally you did everything from commissioning the book to doing pasting up the pasting up the pages mm -hmm. to chopping the cheese at the launch party. It was very... <laughs> On job, <laughs> <laughs> but but when you when you came out to see me, I, I, we, you know, we had we had lunch, and then you said, right, let, let's get to business. And you came into my studio, and you brought out of your handbag a pencil <laughs> and a pencil sharpener, and you sharpened up your pencil, like, <laughs> and suddenly it was like, whoom, business, and <laughs> and you just went through this story and just and. And every now and then you just cross bits out saying you're preaching. You're on you're on a you're on a soapbox, you say. Get get rid of that, get rid of that. So at the end I felt there was nothing left of this story. <laughs> and you said now and you'd said, move that here and move that there and so and you said, now go and sort it out. And I thought and, and, and so you know, you know, after I calmed down, then I went and actually sat down and sorted it out and I threw out the preachy bits. And and then when I finally read it through, I thought it, it's still my story, <laughs> and it's still my what? words. And you you know because you feel editors rewrite stuff, but you hadn't at all. It's just rewriting. Yeah. Um, not with you. I got to tell you though, Michael Warpergo still for a, uh, he doesn't do it now. Mind what you say. Mind what you say. <laughs> Michael, Michael used to take the manuscript, the first manuscript we worked through together, into uh, talks, and it was like red pen through it and the xing out and the try it like this and and so so yes, I think I 
I think the first book we worked on, which I worked on with him, which was The Dancing Bear, literally I X'd the first five pages out of it, <laughs> which, you know, it was important. It worked because they were from an old man's point of view. And this was a book for six, seven year olds. Yeah. So and, and he'd originally had the idea of doing it as an opera. So, you know, it, 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 it's all about I think editing is a little bit to me the, the picture in my mind is always of, of a garden and and there's a beautiful garden there with plants but sometimes it's a bit overgrown and and and, and i have to chop things back <laughs> and tie things up and let the flowers blow, bloom that is always my mental image when i go in it's it's not slash and burn right. i promise i know feels like it to some writers but it's it, it's and 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 you're doing this weird juggly thing in your head um of course you're you're there 100 percent for your author and illustrator and and you want them to think because they're working away in their lonely study and often on their garret <laughs> thinking shall i put but or if there and 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 you, sometimes you're the only person they're talking to about the book but meanwhile you have this whole busy other life which they don't see talking to salespeople and marketing people and going this is going to be the next thing since sliced bread it's wonderful it's great um whole divorces it's going to be fantastic briefing designers and and so 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 you're doing this weird double act of being the midwife to the story while holding the market in your head at the same time. Yeah. And with children's books, which is all I really love doing, um, also just walking this very weird, mysterious, magical thing that we try and do, which is persuade a child that it's another kid talking to them. Yes. Yeah. And... And 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 I have to I have to say you know every time I every, all the time I'm writing and I and I very much edit as I'm going along and then finally you know put it away for a little while come back and re-edit but I have you sitting on my shoulder all the time going preaching stop <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's a long time that's like thirty years of sitting on your shoulder shoe I know but it's all right. <laughs> I have other people oh. sitting on there as well. Don't worry. <laughs> but oh, every time, every time I sort of start sort of you know, getting on my high horse, I think, mm, no, let's not do that <laughs> uh, because children um, just aren't going to 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 listen to that. And very often, I find you know, if if somebody sends me something, would you mind looking at my story? And then, you know, they've got something they want to say, and I think, mm, yeah, that's that's you on a high horse talking to adults, and you're not trying to explain that to children. And if it's a children's book, you've got to remember it's it's for children. For children, and children has given so much stuff. Yeah, and and it's so interesting for me now working in America, where they really love their message. You know, they they. they, 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 they that, that as an agent, you know, editors go, and oh, what's the teachable moment in here? And I'm like, whoa, yeah. I don't think there is a teachable moment. Of course, there always is, because, you know, you have to have a sense of morality behind it. But, you know, you don't want them to feel like they're being force fed to eat broccoli yeah. while they're reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, ha you have to kind of just s slide it in there so that the afterwards they go, oh, wait a minute, rather than. Oh, don't give me that! Don't give me that! Yeah. And again, you know. <laughs> and and you'd be amazed how many stories I get sent where it's like, um, this will teach children to do this, and 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 no, it probably won't, you know. Yeah. Um, it it, it it's the best the best picture books are, are, are complex, and sometimes the story text tells the story, and sometimes the pictures tell the story, and sometimes the pictures have a whole different subplot. We've definitely done that. Yeah. And sometimes it's the gap between what the text is saying and what the pictures are saying, and that's where the joke is. And you can do all kinds of super complex things yeah. that make these things more fun. I've got to say, one of my favorite moments I remember working with you was um, <laughs> Jigger. Day off. You probably don't even remember this. Jigger started off as um, pretty much a border collie, and he got odder and odder and odder. <laughs> and at one point, I went, he really does look like an alien. And I think you must have cracked because you literally went through the whole book and drew aerials coming out of his head on every piece of life. <laughs> they, they were a very strange series. I, 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 I dug out of the attic, actually, that it was... Um because um, it, it all got turned into, did you know it turned into Happy Meals? Oh, 
I never saw the Happy Meal. I knew they yeah. did. So this is the, was very, oh, where are we now? <laughs> the very first Happy Meal yeah. to have a book yeah. ever in the UK. It was so cool, and and now I think they're all having books because because they're not making plastic toys anymore. And so there was a book inside it and a little finger puppet and things like that. It's about ten million of those or something. <laughs> oh, nine, nine million. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knew? Who yes, knew? Yes. Yeah, and now and now they're still. I wrote two more. I, I illustrated two more stories a couple of years ago as well. Yeah. So, so it continued that series, <laughs> and they're selling away yeah. in China very nicely at the moment. You know, and who who knew? <laughs> and they're just so funny and sweet yeah. and lovely, and and yes, just just great stories. Yes, whatever happened to that young man, Michael what, Wilpergo? He had so much promise. He did, didn't he? <laughs> Like he, he ended up as a farmer or something. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a question here, actually. It says, uh, uh, Crispin Dry says, is Fiona creative too? I I think an editor is a very creative person. And I think I think you're kind of, yeah, you are a creative person, I would say, Fiona. Yeah. I, I, I think I can own that because hmm. my boss, uh, the guy who ran Hodder Headline when I left, wrote a little note in my card saying I was the most creative person he 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 knew, and given that he worked with John Le Carre <laughs> and Stephen King, I thought that was, you know, hyperbole, <laughs> but very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think you know, I think creativity comes in many different forms, doesn't it? You don't actually have to. You, you know, I think the you know you're kind of like the midwife, I suppose, in a way as well. Um, I, I think when which when, I think uh, is a very creative thing in itself. It's, well, you have a vision. I mean, the interesting thing for me when I'm working on a book is I, I have this, if, if I know it's going to work when I know I have this extraordinarily tactile vision of what the book will finish, but will look like. Hmm. I know what the cover will look like. I know what the, 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 the paper will smell like. And, and, and um, so, so the creativity, sometimes it's, it's kind of quiet creativity, like thinking, well, here's a sweet little cat story. Let's put it with this insane illustrator from Cambridge. <laughs> make it make it really wacky and strange. So, the, so the pairing, the matching of the author and the illustrator is quite magical. And then, as I say, it's it's getting them away from text picture, text picture, and thinking that you can do. Oh darn it! I, I don't think. Wait a minute. Have I got one of my books around here? I just moved house and I don't have all my books right. Let me show you. Right. Why, why are you there? I'm going to tell you, we've got a, a, a question here from Charlie Taylor. It says, please can I ask as an agent, what helps a manuscript stand out from the zillions that land in your email account each day? Thank oh, you. Oh, that is a really good question. Um, because... Um, it's known as the slush pile, isn't it? Which is not a terribly nice term. <laughs> File. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, right. and, oh. <laughs> hang on. I, I just want to go to the window. I think that's my grocery delivery. Oh right, you don't <laughs> want to miss out on the grocery delivery. <laughs> we have been locked down, so I yes. Just yes, uh, my my sister tweeted me last night yes. to say that she'd managed to get a slot, a Tesco's delivery slot on Friday. <laughs> so she was ridiculously pleased with herself, you know, which in in the old days would have just been fairly normal. <laughs> well, I, I'm relying on the kindness of friends, so, so I just got to send them a text. Anyway, so yes, so, so there's two things I look for, and they're kind of vague and wishy-washy and going to, uh, uh, but they are what I look for, surprise and delight. Right. So, so I'm thinking about um, um, editors. At, when I'm as an agent, I'm going to have to pitch this on to an editor, and there there are very few subjects that haven't been covered in picture books, for example. You know, because because children who read picture books have a very limited number of experiences. So, probably first day at school, you know, um, getting a sibling of being covered. But sometimes you see someone cover it in a way that's just so surprising. You just think, oh, I really like that. So so um, I like books where I can't predict how they're going to end at the beginning. So don't let the pigeon um, take the bus. Do you know that book? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. I haven't seen um, it for a long time. 
Yeah. It's not wonderful, but here we are. Drive the bus. Uh, I know it. I, I just haven't seen it for a long time. Who, who's that by? That's. Um, who's that doing that pigeon drive the bus? Is you, it's you think. Tommy? How do you think it's going to end? Um, it's Mo Willems. Right. And it, it, you think the pigeon's going to drive the bus. Obviously. It's don't let, but he doesn't. <laughs> uh, he ends up with a whole different bunch of dreams and so so things that predict what how the how they'll end this is the one i was going to tell you about this is one of the things that i did hungry hen right oh so, yes so i remember that yeah. little things that you can do here so this is all about a fox that watches a hen here we are end papers end papers this has nothing this is an edit oh, this is what i did with the end papers Lots of feathers, which is suggesting something's going to happen. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so you've got the chicken at the beginning and the egg at the end. You know, right. it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> so there's a chicken here, and up on the hill there lives a fox. I don't know how much you can see. And, and he's watching a chicken. And each time he sneaks down and he thinks, if I keep waiting, she'll get fatter. So he gets, she gets fatter and fatter, and he gets thinner and thinner. So finally, one day, he's, he's just so thin, he's starving. And look at the way we used white space in this, until one day he looks down, and she's so fat, she can't even get her head out. <laughs> <laughs> so he decides now's the time, and he starts to run. And he starts to run. So what we did, here we are, this very, very simple thing that, that I did uh, working with the author here. And there's a little bit of design always in the picture book. Yeah. Is that text was originally here. But by putting it here, you've got, the, sorry, you've got the sense of him speeding away from the text and off the side of the book, yeah. which speeds up. And it was one of the things you and I talked about, I remember, is how... Um, if you want to speed something up, you do lots of little pictures and move the and, and, and have use the space. And if you want to slow things up, you do a big slow picture again, just like film, yeah. close up. Yeah. So this is absolutely. what and this is what I call my John Wayne moment. The fox looks at the hen, and the hen looks at the fox. Now we didn't do any background there. We just wanted a face to face. That is like um, no the Clint Eastwood moment. It's like, what is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? And by putting him over here and him over there and that space there and moving the text down here and that text up there, you create this moment, empty moment of electricity happening there. Is this making sense at all? Absolutely. And well, it is to me anyway. <laughs> and, and, Wait, it, it's, oh. We're milking that moment. So there's that moment of electricity, and then, just as the fox was about to pounce, okay, okay, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? I, 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 we got a ten-second delay, so we can't wait to see what everybody's going to say if they type in. <laughs> I tell you what, everybody, type down what you think is going to happen because you're not going to know yet. <laughs> oh, I'm going to read away. Oh, okay. No, you can tell so, me. That's right. I've got ten seconds. Right. Bends down and gobbles the fox up. <laughs> you see, so surprise and delight you did not know what was going to happen this book has literally 50 words and lots of blank space yeah. but surprise and delight you laughed at the end i laughed at the end the world is a better place yes so so that that that's a sort of simple way of sort of saying what an editor does a little bit and into the sort of secret moving around things and cut cutting the story right back to the bone and also what works for me it, it, honestly if you can make me laugh i'm halfway there right uh, <laughs> you know, got chris chris bin dry here says it seems more like design than editing it, 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 the, that is a good point it, it with picture books it's a bit of both because what you're doing is cutting the text in order to allow the space and the art to speak hmm. the thing about picture books is because um, the hard word count here in the US is 600 words. If you ca I can't as an agent sell anything longer than 600 words normally, not for a debut. Um, so, so what you do is get the subplot to work through the pictures and through the blank spaces. So um, there's a little bit of 
I, yes, I guess I'm kind of a hands-on designery kind of editor stroke agent. Not yeah. everyone works like that. But um, to me, it's part and parcel of the visuals of it. I mean, it's, it's, it, and those skills came in very useful when I was worked on film because I started working in film terrified and going, you know, I really should not have this job. And then <laughs> when I started, but, um, I just thought, oh, oh, this is just like really, really long. Storyboarding is just like really long picture books. Yeah. And sequences so it's it's it, it, it's very similar skills that, that's really interesting because because you you kind of you know you kind of you you rose to great heights in in um children's publishing here in in the uk in in oup and and then and then you went off to Leica to um yeah to to, to do animation yeah it's, it's one of those very frustrating things about publishing is that if you really love books and love editing and love working with writers and artists, they promote you so that literally you do that on Friday afternoons and spend the rest of the week in meetings. It is just, it's nuts, but that's how it panned out. I, I think so that I works to, in many things like teaching. I think you know, people love teaching and then they have to become head teachers and it's all administration or whatever, don't they? I've had brilliant, wonderful yeah. editors who were doing great books like, like I had... Um, Kate at, at, at Hodder who who found um, Cressida Cowell, the one mm. how to train your dragon, and and um, and I always managed to keep a little corner of the list that was just mine. But there comes a point where it's just not as much fun anymore. So mm. I kind of went freelance for a bit, and I was sitting in my Cotswold cottage thinking, what shall I do next? And I literally, literally had a call late one night from a guy going, hi, I, I work for Nike and want to offer you a job in the movies. And I was like, prank call. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but six weeks later, I ended up sitting in the office of the guy who founded Nike, reading him picture books. <laughs> I did actually read him Hungry Head. <laughs> And at the end, he went, you're hired. And I said, to do what? And he said, to find me stories. Because he just bought an animation studio, as you do, <laughs> if you're a billionaire. Yeah. And um, and I said, well, what stories? And he went, the best. <laughs> I <had> no idea. <laughs> no idea. And so I said, well, you know, I'll do it for six months. And then you need to find someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and um, and we went on to make lovely films together for yeah. uh, almost ten years. So you did yeah. you did Coraline, didn't you? Coraline and um, got, Karen, can... but the, the Box Trolls was the my absolute favourite. Yeah, so um, I've, I've got I've got the like a page up on the screen now. So I've got Coraline there, and I'll just click over to Box Trolls. Oh no, I'm, I need to do that on this this window. It's, it's too many windows, that's the problem. So we go to the box trolls. There we are, in case you haven't seen them, in case people don't know what we're talking about. And um, it was just such fun. Um, uh, a piece of art. Oh, excuse me. Well, I, I I remember. In fact, I was I was staying with you one night, and and uh, and you, you were. I think you were just you were doing a deal for uh, Alan, Alan Alan Snow. Yes. And yeah, and and so we were chatting away every now and then. And then the phone call called me to go, and you put go into your you know agent for the yeah yeah okay two million three million four million. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was just so impressed. You, know, and you oh sort of God. did the deal oh that God. night. I, I think. Can't tell you about those big deals because moving from publishing, which you know is <laughs> some sort of money that you can kind of, kind of understand. To, I mean, gosh, I got to say that job, it was one of the most fun ever because mm. what you got to do was read people's books and go and go to swanky hotels in LA with directors, <laughs> not Harvey Weinstein stuff, but I did go to the place where he stayed. And, um, and, and, and then you oh. go back to an author and say, life changing check and we're going to make a film of your book. It, it really was pretty exciting. Um, and I like, but, but but at one point when we were doing some very big deals, I literally we were talking about so much money I couldn't actually wrap my head around it. You know that it's too big. I can't imagine it. So I used to think of it in units of marks and spences. How many marks and spences <laughs> is manuscript worth? <laughs> because you know when you're talking about 
30 million or something for, for a project or, what, or you know, the, the total budget of 80 million, 120 million. I can't visualize that. I don't know if you can. I can't. No, no. But branches of Marks and Spencers, I could do that. That was my character. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then you um, have become an agent. I have. I left like her. Um, gosh, about <coughs> um, nine years ago. Um, there comes a point they, they, it, where the studio had gone from fifty people and scrappy and fun to five hundred people, and they had an HR department, and you know, they, they, it all got a bit codified, and and. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not that kind of a person, you know. Most of the places we've worked together, I've been starting yeah. things up. And, and, but I felt I'd completely fallen in love with Oregon. It's beautiful. It's kind of like Scotland, but with the weather of the south of France. Oh, right. It's, <laughs> you know, lots of trees, <clears throat> vineyards, and, and, and really lovely summers and nice wet and sort of rainy winters. And so, but, but, there are no publishers here, not many, very no. tiny ones. And um, so so I, I did the immigrant thing. I, I, I set up my own business, you know, first children's agent in, in Portland. And I, I'm, I'm at the end of the Oregon Trail setting up my... my <laughs> <laughs> and, and you struck yeah, gold. <laughs> I have. Right now, one of my local authors who has, has had... Uh, 28 weeks in the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, for, fantastic, fantastic. For, uh, for 8 to 12 year olds, which is called A Wolf Called Wanderer and Anderson Press do it in the UK. Fantastic, um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, we yeah. got Sarah, Sarafina is, is up the road from you in Vancouver Island. <laughs> Oh, lucky you! Oh, that's yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, I love thank you. Yeah, we had we we had a chat about that last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so she said, the kids told me at the end of the last page of the pigeon books, he's hidden in a scene, and you need to find him. They love looking for him. I think oh, she says so she's a teacher as well. So yeah, I have to look out for that. Uh, I I love that pigeon book because he has. If, if you if you get the chance to see, he does every stage of toddler meltdown. This is the whole <laughs> anger, denial, bargaining. It's it it is the funniest thing ever. And I didn't publish that one. I I, I just love it as a book. Uh, uh, um, Crispin Dry says Fiona is amazing. You can almost see the sparks flying off her in all directions. I, sh <laughs> I should have a <laughs> I should have a kind of an effect that I could do. What what can I do? Um, I, I, no, I, 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 yeah. I, I, have I got sparks? Have I got sparks? Thank sparks. you. No, you haven't got the sparks, unfortunately. You got the zing. Anyway, have another zing. Zing. No, I, I, I might have another I, one. How about? Oh, you don't want that one. Oh, no. <laughs> And by the yeah. way, I've got to say, Crispin Dry is such a good name. It is great, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's, a good one. You've got to have that for your book name. Yeah, when, when uh, I think on. Um, uh, on on Twitter, he has a different name. I think he's I think he's David. I, I, it's so so difficult. There's so many names coming from different places, and people have different different names on different social media accounts and things. And whoa, you're not quite sure who's who, you know. And suddenly you realise, oh, that, that's that person I've been talking to on on Instagram or something. <laughs> oh, it's so separate guys. Uh, yes. The, and we got um, Judy in the big shed. She says, "Does Fiona know Melissa Wiley?" No, I do not. Children's, uh, but, children's author, also Portland. Ha! Huh, no, oh. but it's a very, very small um, world. So it's one degree of separation. I will know people who know her. And I am going to write that down and look her up and right. see what I'm going I'm to Google. Me Melissa Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y. Uh, there we are. Do you know, I'm saying that and I'm thinking, oh, God, I've met her and I've probably met her and now I'm going to be really embarrassed because oh, everyone... I'm I'm, I'm so terrible with names and people say no do you know somebody and I go yeah. uh and then you meet I, them at, at, a, at a party or a festival or something and you look at them and, and you know the face and you just oh no it gets so embarrassing I'm looking her up on my phone and I definitely recognize her face oh yikes <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> so yeah. the other thing I should say, um, since if anyone's 
busy writing, and I'm sure a lot of people are with um, mm. not wrang kid wrangling and all the things yeah, that. I, I think I think half half the world in lockdown are writing children's books at the moment. Right. I think um, <laughs> or their um, novel, their great novel, or something. Um, so I am open to submissions, and I have clients in the UK um, and. Um, and, and Canada, Australia. In fact, the New Zealand Laureate, Children's Laureate, is one of my clients. Oh, fantastic. And, and we do this. We Skype all the time. Sometimes I can't quite believe that we um, we haven't met in person because many of them are now <laughs> my closest friends. And we <laughs> Skype so often and that, that it's hard to remember I haven't met them. But um, So uh, I use, um, I, I guess... Um, should I send you the email to send queries to? Do, do, are you prepared to have people do that? Yes, yes, that's how I find talent. Absolutely. Right, yes. absolutely. Well, I mean, yes. if yes, if you send it to me, I can put it up on the screen even. All right, all right. So, well, now <laughs> if you're... Or I tell you what, if you send it to me, I will later uh, when this is finished, I'll put it in the description box down below, and then people can find oh, it. Oh, you bring in a nice edit. Oh, good. Can you do yeah. lots of Photoshop and make me look I, lovely? Well, <laughs> well, I don't need to. <laughs> oh, so much fun chatting with you again. <laughs> Uh, I have this fantastic piece of software. I can sort of add all sorts of things in in into the the live stream. So yeah. Oh, well, a tiara. Uh, okay. Although uh, Judy says, "Sorry, didn't mean to put you on the spot." <laughs> well, you totally did, Judy. What can I say? Totally did. Totally did. <laughs> Ju Judy lives in a little shed in in her in her garden. She doesn't actually. You know, she she has a tiny shed in a tiny house near in, near Winchester. She's right by the canal. So. <laughs> How, see, I just moved house literally a week before all this stuff happened, and I now have a little shed at the bottom of the garden. I just haven't set it up yet, um, but but I've got a garden and it's got a shed and a very very fancy chicken coop. So I oh wow, chicken chicken tips. You've yes. got to watch out for that fox. You see, that's the thing. Uh, I, I I I do wonder what 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 do you think though with like the fox and the hen? You know, children are. They don't see foxes or hens. They might see foxes in town now, but they don't see hens. And there's so many animals. They, they you know, they they they're not sort of really in touch with nature. And yet we still use all these animal stories. And they they don't really see the animals, do they? Well, isn't that all the more reason to do them? I mean, I I personally never. I mean, the, when you think of, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a kangaroo face to face. That's Maybe true. in a, a zoo. Um, <laughs> but I'm still happy to read about Roo and Kanga and, you know, I, I, I don't think, I, I don't, That's true. I think, I think actually in a way it's even more important now. I, I, I've done a lovely picture book called Sea Bear last year, um, which I don't think is available, available in the UK yet. And it's, it's, it's just beautiful art about polar bears and, and, and what their lives are like. And, uh, and it, it's just a book that makes you feel happy to look at it. And I don't know what polar bears look like underwater, um, <laughs> but I know now because I've read this wonderful book by from yeah. written and drawn by someone who, who has done that. And um, th right now um, she's working with my wolf book author, my bestseller, on a book about orcas, um, the, the killer whales. Yeah. And and they went off. They went off together. And. Um, and kayaks in the in the, in the, in, the, in the Salish Sea, which is beyond Seattle, to go um, orca watching, and they took a boat, and and they were doing all this research, and I was like, oh, you really need your agent there, you really do, and they were like, no, you re we really don't. <laughs> I was like, you do, you do. Anyway, they went and had this fantastic adventure, and they're making this wonderful book about orcas, and. Uh, it's going to be fantastic and I will then know all about what they saw lucky me <laughs> but uh, yes it's a very yeah. important books are how you discover things that aren't faced right in front of you yeah I guess so but I, I mean I suppose I was thinking about the those kind of relationships that you know that we sort of take for granted like the chicken and the fox you know and you you know, you know that the fox wants to eat the chicken, but you know, do, I don't know. Children sort of do do they? They not quite so related. You know, sort of well, so close close to the farm and things does these days. Does it work for urban kids? Should I just be yeah. doing um, good night, good night fire engine sort of yeah. books? 
yes. Um, <laughs> and d yes, of course, there's a place for that too. Yeah. Um, what, what you're doing is just introducing with humor and joy um, different ways of looking at the world. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that, that, there's nothing profound in that book. It's just funny. Um, yeah. There are other books that say more profound things about our daily life. And, um, and, and they're also very valid. Um, what's this one? Oh, this is lovely. The Reptile Club. This is, this is, this is a recent one that's just come out with my, oh. my Canadian authors. And this is, uh, um, uh, this is a boy who, who um, doesn't have very many friends at school. So uh, he, and he, he tries joining different clubs and then he sets up his own, which is the reptile club, expecting reptile, you know, friends who had kids who have reptiles to come and join. But no, a bunch of reptiles come and join his club. <laughs> The, the unexpected. I've got a question here from Charlie Taylor. It says, please, can you ask uh, how Fiona feels about? Oh, it's just disappeared. Uh, how you? How Fiona feels about the middle grade fantasy genre? Thanks. Oh, very positive. Love yeah. middle grade fantasy. And I'll tell you something. Please stop it, you two. Very <laughs> cat going on. <laughs> Joys of working from home. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. You two stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway once upon a time there were these two cats oh don't yeah yeah <laughs> very yes okay that risk of looking like a crazy woman with cats rather than a professional agent you can edit that bit out <laughs> <laughs> this is live <laughs> oh, right. oh. so fantasy genre some of the most important writing at middle grade is fantasy, I think, because if you're particularly if you're having a, a tough time, the way that you get around it is by escapism. Um, I uh, for me, it was Narnia. I was quite a lonely child and we were living in quite remote places. And my father was in the Navy, so we moved house a lot. So it was hard to get to know people. I um, made very similar too. yeah, m moving yeah. around. My dad was in the army. Yeah. Yeah, so you and, know. and Narnia. I, 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 I was going to grow up and be Prince Caspian. That was my, that was my uh, oh God, that's career so sorted. <laughs> that's you and me in a nutshell. I was just going to be a <laughs> mermaid. I was, I was going to be a back from Narnia boy. I don't even know if they had mermaids. They must have done, but I definitely was a Narnia mermaid. I, did, I was not at the front of the stage at all. That's so funny. <laughs> But what it does not, it, it provides a vehicle for us to escape into a magical world. Um, I might just have to put some food down. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> we got Dabby Disco Draws asks, Fiona, how long uh, have you been editing books? Oh, grief. I don't think you ask a lady that kind you of thing. You don't question. ask a lady that, Dabby Disco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's been a little while shall we just say that <laughs> well you, you were one of the i think one of the very very first people i worked with because I, be, yeah. I my anc black was my first job and i started there in 1985 and we did our book to first book together in 86 yeah so, and that's the one that was the happy meal and is still in print today I, it's amazing isn't it some books just have this incredible life don't they yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, because they were very, very good. That's why. So, thank so. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll say, I'll say, thank you for the compliment, and, and, and thank you for having been been there to make it happen as right. well. <laughs> and and what a loving we are having. This is so yeah. nice. Um, but yes, so so um, when I first started in publishing, we we had manual typewriters. So um, if you wanted to change anything, um, you had to use correction fluid or backspace with the paper. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, yes. And um, no computers. And if you, when you put a book together which had text and pictures, um, particularly one like shoes where the text goes like this, I used to cut out every letter by hand and glue it into place yeah. with the um, camera-ready copy, um, yeah. which is why a lot of that text is a little bit wonky actually I mean, <laughs> if you had computers it wouldn't do stuff like that so um so yes it was that long ago um and uh um it, it things have changed so much but you, I, you showed me the very very first moving image on a computer it was i think it was a chicken walking it across. was a chicken 
and I, I I've got it I've got it on a well I, I've, I've got a little old-fashioned disc floppy draw disc yeah. with that chicken on it I don't know if, if if I could ever get it to work again I don't know. <laughs> because right up till then we just all used computer you know word process they were word processors that's what they were yeah. called we used them as, 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 as and one of the things that I noticed immediately um, and I can think of one or two quite well-known authors who were guilty of this is when we went from manual from authors sending type scripts typewritten scripts to word processors everything went a third longer because you could cut and paste and move things around. So Absolutely. everybody, everybody's st stories got longer and books have got longer and longer. You, you know, you really see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did make a difference. Yeah. yeah. I remember I, 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 I did a, a, a thing with Puffin. So that must have been, oh, sort of 1990 or something like that. Oh, no, it's around about the time of the CD-ROMs when CD-ROMs came in. And you were way ahead of the and, I, yeah. and I, I pitched to Puffin Books to, to do this, you know, sort of digital thing. And, I, and, and, and my pitch was I, I opened up with uh, a little thing with the Puffin flapping yeah. or something like that. And I had the song. And you remember the old Puffin Club song? There uh, is which, nothing, nothing like a puffin. <laughs> so, which I changed to, when your memory needs stuffing, there's nothing like a puffin, so double click a puffin right away. <laughs> and they went, what? <laughs> they yeah. just didn't understand what I was talking like, about. Oh, never catch on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, you were always way ahead of the curve on all those things. <clears throat> um, and, and it was extraordinary to see that little animated chicken and just how everything has changed yes yeah. well I, I also remember because because I did um, a thing for oh, I did a, a, a European libraries thing I was invited to go to Athens to talk about the internet yeah. so this is about yeah. 96 97 and and it was extraordinary that this great big conference and people were coming up and they were talking about you know the 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 this is my model for searching the internet. It's it's the uh, the seven point sailing plan. You launch out and you go across to the sea and you find what you want and you bring your cargo home. And I got up and I said, "What what is all this? You just double click and you just get what you want." And then I got a round of applause. You know? <laughs> and then when I I showed my animations and they were going, "Is is this is this on the internet?" And 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 the, the the head of libraries from Portugal came up to me also sort of gave me the most enormous hug. Said, this is what libraries will all be about. Oh, and it was <laughs> but, so right. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, so was, exciting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I should just go back. To, should we? Should, I had more, another thought about um, uh, fantasy for your. I've forgotten. Yeah. Yes. What was the name of the, the chap? I've Charlie, forgotten. I think. Charlie yeah. Taylor, I think it was. Yeah. So, yeah. Charlie, one of the interesting things to me, um, I've got to be careful because this is being recorded, but what I find working in both with American writers and English writers is I think English children's writers are better at fantasy on the whole, as a general Ooh. rule. Ooh, and I, there we go. I, I think it's because we are so steeped in very, very good fantasy. Or all escapists. I don't know, but um, uh, well, I, I have I, I have a castle in that direction, about ten miles that way. I've got a castle about ten miles in that direction, and a whole load of them over in that direction. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that that yes. Where whereas we have homesteads. So when you think of the really great children's books, of, you know, you think of Narnia, and you think of Susan Cooper, Harry Potter, all fantasy. You think of the really great. Um, classics of American children's literature. It's things like Charlotte's Web, Little House on the Prairie, or that's a bit yeah. controversial now. But but it, 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 it's but they they're very good at the the day to day. And and of course Charlotte's Web is fantasy because it's talking pigs. But but those magical worlds. There's something about the English sensibility I think that that writes brilliantly there. And Scottish actually the the whole mm. Catholic Scottish Irish. Well, I mean, I love. I, I, I'm kind of a sucker for Irish writers. There's, there's, a, there's a use of language there. Because mm. I've, I've become a Welsh fantasy writer myself. <laughs> you have. You're I have fantasy. I, I have a I have a whole whole middle grade trilogy, all sort of set with dragons in Wales and stuff and things. Oh, all, all based 
all based on the sort of weaving around the Mabinogion and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Merlin's in there, the whole lot. <laughs> Oh, I, I, now we I, have uh, yeah, Olivia Mills says any thoughts on feminist children's books to inspire little boys and girls oh uh, well I think I, I think that this speaks to what you and I were saying I all of my books are feminist um, and also um, uh, try and uh, empowering in different ways when when um, as someone who's terminally short-sighted it used to bug me that um, the only kids when I was growing up who um, wore glasses were always like Velma and Scooby Doo. They were, they, you know, they were called brains, and they didn't get to have adventures. Now, you know, you can be super active and short sighted. So I make it a, a, a um, I sort of again, this is what an editor does. You can't make someone change their their their, their main character, but you can gently suggest. So so um, so there are there there are there are kids with glasses in all my books. Um, and and the same thing with the feminist thing. Uh, some people do overtly feminist books. There's a, my friend Rob Perlman here in the states wrote a book called Pink Is for Boys, which is just wonderfully out there um, feminist book um, about raising boys because yeah. that you can't. The feminist message is not just for girls. Um, but what I do is just make sure that the books and the authors I take on. Um, have those strong values that, that that girls do not sit around and make tea. And funnily enough, I've just been um, doing critiquing a, a novel that someone sent me, and um, it it was kind of fun. It had it was a bit like um, you know, a bit junior James Bondy. And I just said, you know, isn't it odd that um, the main there are no strong female characters? And you know, one of the one of the kids was the um, uh, was the son of the president, and I went. Well, could the president not be his mom rather than his dad? And he's like, Oh, I never thought of that. And you're like, Oh, well, maybe it's time, you know. <laughs> so, so, so I, I'm not quite sure if you, if, 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 if the person writing in means messagey books about um, let's all do strong things. And there's no doubt that there is a market for that. I mean, there's um. Oh, what's there's a I'm kind of thinking more about American books because I'm here, but there, there's um oh what's her name oh oh what's her name Ada Twist what? scientist that was a big hmm. bestseller last year in the UK yeah. yes um, and, and, and I know I know when I when I started out then I I, I only knew little girls because I, I I have three nieces and. Yeah. Uh, and, and and when I would sort of read stories to them, then the, you know, looking for stories to them, and um, the, 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 everything seemed to be, you know, all the boys were the heroes, and I, I kind of thought this is really bad. So so I sort of started out wanting to write sort of her really good strong heroines, and various people have said over the times, you know, uh, to to me, oh, you write really good strong heroines, oh, and books about the tractor, the, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 and and you know Lydia right from the start yeah. was the first little right. thing Lydia. that I did, yeah. and and yeah. and um, but then then there reached a point when when you went into a bookshop everything went pink, yeah. the, and well, the, the, and I felt that. boys were being really put off reading, and so I sort of suddenly thought I've got to write for boys yeah. to get them into it now because boys stopped reading at one point, didn't they? Well, I don't think they ever stopped, mm. but I think well, it stopped being cool to say you were reading. Yeah. I think remember mm -hmm. these are all surveys, and you know what? You, you know if you if it's not cool, you know the eleven your eleven year old's still going to be reading under the bed clothes, but he's not going to say <laughs> so. so. They were always reading, but sometimes was it, was it you that did that series called Under the Covers or something, where, where you strapped a torch to it? Yeah, yeah, that's that was right. you. Yes, was <laughs> yeah, Harper Collins. That's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. I always thought that would be the best, way, a good way to do. Um, do, do Ina Blyton actually? I wish we'd done that with Ina Blyton. Yeah, different ways of getting books to kids. I, I, I've always wanted to get teenage novels in racks in um, Topshop along with the tights and yes. the lipstick. You know, and we did manage that at one point. Um, so you know, just just different different vehicles as well as reaching the you know the kids who have who who are happy to go to libraries. But yeah, yeah um, the whole. Yeah. It was funny. It went in waves because when I first started in publishing, we were not good at um, um, a, a diversity. We really weren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when I say diversity, lots of strong boys and 
Um, and I did a book in the, in the series that Mossop was in um, called mm. Jesse Runs Away. And the main character had Down syndrome. And mm. we did it because my brother has um, a, a special needs. And the author, um, uh, her, um, uh, had, her kid had special needs. And, um, and we didn't even mention it in the text. We just had Sheila McNicholas did the art and it was a Down syndrome kid. And, um, and we got quite a lot of flack for not saying this is a I have Down syndrome book. But it wasn't. And it was because my brother said, you know, whenever the, he looked for books with people like him in, they were all called I have mental handicap. They were never yeah. adventure stories, so we. So I've always tried to encourage people to write stories like that, and I think finally the world's caught up with us. And now, yeah. you know, the whole own voices movement, where people who 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 have, you know, instead of me saying my brother has it, you know, people who who have special needs are writing about it. This yeah. is this, this is what's good about the twenty first century, I think. Yeah, I I remember I, I got I got one in a competition for World Book Day <laughs> uh, by a, a, a special school that I went to for the day, and there was this the, and the, the the lad who'd written in, you know, and said why he wanted an author to come, and uh, and so so you know we sat down for half an hour, and he was telling me he said I want you to I want you to write books about people like me, and he was in a wheelchair, and he said you know I'm 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 you know I'm, I'm you know I'm all here, I'm intelligent. You know, but and I'm I just think, physically yeah. stuck, you know. To, now I would say to him, don't ask that guy over there. Write your own book. Well, no, write... there is that, yeah. But yes. but but so in the end, and I kept thinking, well, how, do, how, how do I do that? So in the end, um, you know, my, my Dark Claw series, Dark Claw is severely um, handicapped, in fact. It, but it's all in the back story. It's not really, it's not pushed in your face. But that... that but that sort of bitterness that of that Dark Claw has comes from sort of being being pushed aside as a kid, and you know, from from, from going through that kind of thing, which is from the experience that I got from that day and from what that young lad was telling and me. Let us not forget your very own own voices story, which is the Ginger Ninja, yeah. which is all about being bullied because you're because you're a ginger. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Which is all sort of. You know, it kind of went away, but I feel it's coming back again now. Unfortunately, it's yeah. But there we go. <laughs> uh, there, there was there was an advert on this. There was the, the, the yeah. There was an advert for Cadbury's fingers the other week. Who was the lonely kid nobody wanted to talk to in the playground? Sat all on his own. The ginger oh. one. You know. <laughs> uh, they have this phrase over here. I don't know yeah. if. They Move to England that if some, something's not doesn't fit in they call it the red-headed stepchild oh really? yes <laughs> isn't that just awful it's tricky isn't it it's tricky yeah, yeah. We, we need to we i'm sure you you know you probably need your well i was going to say you need your tea you need your breakfast probably do you That's so right. what have we got um yeah, <laughs> yeah so i i we got questions. What are some of your most memorable subplots? And loving these ideas and the excitement when you're sharing them. Thank you. Charlie Aww. Taylor says, proud to be ginger. <laughs> Yay. Yay, Charlie. So, there we go. Well, I, I think we've been at this for an hour or so now, uh, Fiona. <laughs> I'm sure we could go on for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> did we pick up all the time I lost with the, with the not being able to connect thing? We did. We yeah, I think we sort of cut, cut, caught up on that now, yeah. And then, uh, so well, I'm going to say thank you so much for. Um, this has been for, lovely. Yeah, and and it's it's been great catching up. And I hope I <laughs> I hope it hasn't just been you and I having a lovely catch up. But I hope sort of people have got something <laughs> something from it. <laughs> and uh, Judy in the big shed says we ginger knobs will have our day. <laughs> Well, and people can people when you've got your manuscript ready, and I urge you to you know proofread it, check it with your with your with your um, critique group if you have that, or your or your best friend have them read it. When you think it's ready to send, I am taking on new clients. I'm very selective, but I do take on at least three two to three people every year straight who send me manuscripts so right. um don't worry about entering competitions and doing conferences and things i literally read everything that i've sent wow. and um and by the way next time you're in a competition can i try and win you <laughs> 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 
As long as you pay the airfare, that's the thing. <laughs> So uh, there we are. So we got uh, Crispin Dry says, thanks, Fiona and Rupert. Uh, yeah. Judy says, what a lovely chat. Thanks, both of you. Jessica Dre says, bye, bye both. Thanks. Uh, Charlie says, can't wait to get that link to Fiona. <laughs> Hannah Lambert, thank you so much. Joseph Miller, great conversation. Thanks to both of you. So yeah. I'm now, uh, uh, Crispin Dry says, Fiona is a force of nature. So I, I would <laughs> agree with you. I, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say thank you everybody for watching and I'm going to press this little button here and tomorrow I really will talk more about perspective and we'll do some perspective drawing <laughs> okay, so. well thanks for watching and if you enjoyed that then please do make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel and while you're about it click the little bell next to the subscribe button and you will be notified when the next live drawing video will be. In the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.